All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Saturday, boys and girls. Hope everyone is doing well. As you know, my name is Matt, aka Nighthawk Plays, and welcome to the comic show. I am your host uh, today on this lovely Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, uh, my boy, uh, Frank, uh, aka Technique, uh, he has some prior obligations today. So uh, he is off doing that while I'm here providing you with uh, some interesting information that came out over this past week in regards to everything superhero, whether it's movies, whether it's TV, whether it's comic books, or anything and everything in between. That's what we talk about over here. In the comics, so whether it's the Thor Love and Thunder teaser trailer that just came out, what's going on with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, <laughs> good old Ezra Miller, uh, and much, much more, we're going to be talking about it uh, about it here today for you and everyone uh, in podcast land, hello, 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 and of course everyone uh, watching us live here on uh, twitch.tv slash raredrop. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Interested into hearing uh, your questions, your comments, your thoughts on what we're about to talk to hear uh, to you today. So this is episode 40. I want to actually say we are 1, 2, 10. Math is hard. Roughly about 14 days away from our initial premiere at the beginning of May. So uh, it's it's been a wild journey. Uh, so you know, I know we're going to be talking about it probably over the next week or two anyway, and, and Frank will have some things to say, but absolutely appreciate all the love to the Rare Drop family for, uh, for, for listening to us, for believing in us, trusting us, and putting up with us as well. So uh, thank you to them. Thank you for us here. Um, I'm going to be sipping on some King's Coast coffee. If you have any questions, throw it down in here. But yeah, I'm rocking it solo today. So sit back, relax. Let's have some coffee. My voice is annoying. Too bad. So, first and foremost, the the elephant in the room, the Thor Love and Thunder teaser trailer finally, finally made its way onto the interwebs this past week. I actually have it up here. It was released the other day. I think it was what? It was Monday or Tuesday, it was. Anyway, regardless, the trailer was absolutely insane. But before we go into the reaction or what's happening or or my thoughts in general on it, first thing that you need to know about is this has been the shortest window between any Marvel movie and even uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, uh, excuse me, Spider-Man No Way Home as well. The shortest time between the initial teaser or the initial trailer to when the movie is going to be released. The holder to this prior was actually the Incredible Hulk, the uh, Edward Norton film that came out all the way back in the early, uh, I guess, late 2000s, 10s. Yeah, it came out in 2008. And it was actually 93 days, so a hair over or depending on how many days there are, right, um, in a month essentially three months. This came in at 92 days from when this movie is set to release on July 8th to when the trailer premiered, which was uh, the other day, which was 92 days, which was an actual incredible feat that it has taken that long for it to actually uh, be released, which is still beyond me that it's taken this long. But... When it came out, I think I think my thoughts are pretty much aligned with I would hope all of yours. Uh, and if it's not, please, please, please let me know. But uh, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, it, it released five days ago. First off, the trailer starts with you get a little bit of sweet child of mine. From Guns N' Roses, right? And that just sets off this, what is it, about a minute and 30 long epic journey 
you see Thor kind of growing up and you get some nice little teases too. You get the original OG Thor outfit, kind of like when it looks like when he's in his teens. You get some pre-Avengers gear, you get Avengers, and then you get where he is today, uh, staring out into space, which looks like uh, the, oh my God, it's a sacred tree within the Marvel Universe. I forget it off the top of my head. And then you get the workout montage of uh, uh, of having a little too many beers and playing Fortnite, Thor uh, looking at what is seemingly a giant that has been slain. And then, I mean, you get a montage after montage after montage, right? You get to see Thor with the, Gar the Asgardians of the Galaxy, excuse me, I mean, it is the Guardians of the Galaxy, but they're considered the Asgardians of the Galaxy, right? You see Chris Pratt, you see David Batista. I'm sorry, uh, Drax, you see um, Mantis, you see Groot, you see pretty much everyone but uh, Gamora. And he is the Thor that we saw pretty much, I want to say, say, in Ragnarok. He's a little bit cocky. He's a little bit arrogant. He is also very, very, very strong. He knows his power. I think he finally got to a point where after Infinity Wars... And after Endgame, and whatever probably happens in the first third of this movie, the first act, right? He gets back into the, all right, it's about time to kick ass Thor. And you get to see a lot. I mean, as we know, uh, for those of you who don't know, spoiler alert, uh, Christian Bale is playing uh, the god, the god slayer, the god killer. Um, in here, we don't get a tease of him or where we don't see him at all, excuse me, in this trailer. But we know he's going after the gods. You see a little bit of a um, a, a fun little cameo that's going to be in the movie. We get to see what I believe is Olympus, right? You get to see Russell Crowe grabbing his, uh, his lightning as Zeus. And at the end of it, I'm kind of skipping all over the place here as I have the trailer going up in the background. We kind of can't have it here. But I got to get to the end of it because... This is what everyone's talking about. This is what we knew, and this is what we've been trying to figure out how it's going to go, is you see Jane Foster, Natalie Portman, retor returning to the MCU after a very, very long... I forgot. I actually should look it up how long it's been. After a long absence, coming back as Jane Foster, and she wields... I'm going to butcher this, but I think... Majoran? Mir Mir Meerkat? <laughs> Um, that is cracked and destroyed, just like uh, Helna destroyed it in front of us in, in Ragnarok. You can see the cracks in it, but her presence or whatever is actually happening there allowed her to summon it, and she is Thor. She is she's Lady Thor, but she is Thor. Like if you go and see Natalie Portman and you see Jane Forster, she has shorter. Or kind of like, not too long hair, but it's like a, a brown or an orban, kind of have a little bit of red in it, right? This one, though, she has long blonde hair. This absolutely transforms her into Thor. And seeing Chris Hemsworth's Thor, that's just going to be fun, saying that stuff back and forth. He is shocked. He is, what the hell is going on here? He's happy. Her arms look like, also, by the way, she clearly has been working out. Um, she looks like she's about to beat someone down in here, which is absolutely awesome. I'm just moving a couple of things around on my desktop, of course, so things don't uh, get a little buggy and, and funky here. But that's kind of the trailer from start to finish, I want to say. And it is epic on any and all levels. How are they going to interact with one another? How is this going to affect uh, the God Butcher? That is Christian Bale coming across, uh, slaying presumably all these gods. How is that going to tie into what we're seeing in Moon Knight? Because now we're kind of getting the idea of, of how the gods are seen or shown. Because the Celestials aren't gods. They're just really powerful beings, right? Technically, uh, uh, Kurt, Kurt Russell was a Celestial as well. He wasn't a god. We're kind of getting our first tidbits of true gods or how they work outside of Odin and uh, the Odin sleep and the Odin force 
we're getting to see that now in Moon Knight. So how that's going to push into the release and how it's going to work here, it's going to be very interesting to say the least, but that's why we also haven't gotten anything else probably with this teaser trailer with seeing him. They wanted to focus on what's going on in Thor's head after, after what? Uh, after Endgame, excuse me where he was, where he is, and kind of a little bit of uh, funness, I guess you can kind of go in between because you still have to remember, we do have uh, the Lady Valkyrie who is now taking over Asgard, which is in Norway now, I believe, which we get a little bit of uh, uh, scenery and, and information and look at that as well, including how, how you have, um, oh my God, the two goats, I forget their name, the two goats, you got the, the, essentially, in Marvel, there's literally two goats that could travel between universes and, and realms with the help of, of, of essentially Thor, and you get to see them. They're, they're essentially, I think they're called just, 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 just goats, and you get to see that a little bit, so I know big Marvel fans are just big comic book, you know, fiends probably freaked out when they saw that as well, but overall, awesome trailer excited to see it i watched it on stream when it came out i believe it was what's i think it was five days ago let's do the quick math one two three four five it was either monday or tuesday when it came out which was absolutely awesome uh the community was definitely vibing it you know uh, just hearing sweet child of mine how that's going to incorporate into what this movie is about how he is the son of a god i presume um, how that's going to work and 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 be iterated within this film is going to be really cool to see. I assume we're only going to see the Asgardians, guard, uh, the Asgardians of the Galaxy probably for the first third of the movie, the first act, and then he's probably going to go off and do his own thing because that's when the God Butcher probably comes around and and he gets called from Jane or something of that nature. But regardless, initial reaction is I can't wait. We got Multiverse of Madness, which we'll tie into next. You know, easy, quick transition smile we got multiverse of madness coming out in about 13 days well it officially comes out on the 6th but you got the midnight releases and everything wednesday on the 4th so give or take you know 10 to 13 days away it's cool that you got this trailer out now i assume probably a week or two after sometime in may if not at the release of this if they want to get an even bigger pop you're going to get a fuller a fuller version not a, just a teaser trailer or they may wait until after a couple of weeks, beginning of June or after Obi-Wan comes out, because I don't know how the big mouse, the overlord mouse wants to things to come out through that uh, through that path. But this was only a minute 30. You're going to probably see a two or three minute version within the next couple of weeks, especially after Multiverse of Madness comes out. They definitely wanted to lead the way and lead the path to it because Multiverse of Madness comes out in 13 days. We keep on getting more TV spots. We keep on getting more trailers out there. It is giving us more questions that are not answered. But it, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> but it's really cool to have the conversation as far as what we're seeing, what we're thinking, what may or may not be happening in here. I I'm I'm of the mindset that this phase of Marvel Phase Four is going to be tied into this whole multiverse theory so they can expand upon characters they can bring in new characters they can bring back different characters with different names and faces hence no way home toby Maguire, um the osbournes well harry osborne well not specifically harry but norman you know what i mean and of course um Andrew Garfield, they, they're, they're leading the path and leading the way to that, especially after Morbius, which we're not even going to talk about here anymore. It's bleh. Anyway, even though we got the Celestials and we know that we are, we are, the, the Earth 616 or the main MCU multiverse is going to be judged by the Celestial Judge. Sooner or later, I believe that's more of a phase five or six. We're going to go cosmic. That's when we're going to have Dr. Dr. Um, excuse me, Dr. Doom. That's where we're probably going to have Galactus come in. I think this is still going to be tied around the multiverse of madness. And whatever happens throughout the multiverse of madness, 
movie that comes out in a couple of uh, days, about two weeks. That's what this whole phase is is after. I know we got Moon Knight. And we're talking about Midnight Society. We have Blade. You know, we got obviously Thor: Love and Thunder. We got a couple of other films that we know coming out. You know, obviously Wakanda Forever. I'm forgetting other ones right now. TV shows, of course. This this is going to set up whatever this next chapter is, this next path, or what they say is the next phase. And I don't know about all of you, but I am both extremely excited for Multiverse of Madness, but I am also very scared of Multiverse of Madness because unlike Spider-Man No Way Home and other films prior, like Avengers Infinity Wars, Avengers Endgames, as much as I have an idea about what may aspire, who the big bad is, what the Illuminati is, you know, Patrick Stewart, we've all heard him, you know, my old shock. In addition to Mordo and who we may or may not see cameo-wise, obviously American Chavez, are we going to see Superior Iron Man? I'm also very scared because there are so many questions that need to be answered. I think last time we were on the show, we had the idea and we had the thought that there was only one Scarlet Witch, only one Nexus being. That's what we've all been, th that's what we all thought throughout comic books, throughout the MCU, essentially, to when Disney Plus came out. Because they are setting up, I believe that there is only one Nexus being, only one Scarlet Witch per universe. Which is kind of strange to say. The reason why I say that is our Elizabeth Olsen, our, our Scarlet Witch, is where she is today. And she's going to travel throughout the multiverse and in, in the next couple of weeks. But we've already seen a different version of her. And we know that everything that we're seeing right now is canon in the MCU. We've seen another version of her, another version of Scarlet Witch, excuse me, in What If? In the zombie episode, I think it was episode four, three or four. And what if is canon? So that we do know, unless it's many years from now, but that doesn't make sense because that was Tom Holland's, supposedly Tom Holland's Spider-Man. That was also our Benedict Cumberbatch, our Doctor Strange, our Iron Man, excuse me, and, and Iron Man, excuse me. I don't, I, I, it, it was a different universe. So for everyone saying that, oh, there's only supposed to be one, that actually completely debunks that. And the person that we were seeing, if there are going to be multiple Scarlet Witches uh, in this film, which I think we've kind of seen from the trailers and, and, and believe from the trailers, that's going to make up an interesting storyline and an interesting plot as I take a sip of my nitro cold brew King's Coast coffee. Please hold. <laughs> The reason be because I say that is we've seen our first glimpse of uh, Billy and Tommy in the trailers. Our Scarlet Witch has been in a lot of pain, but she kind of broke through it, we believe, at the end of, of WandaVision. How is she going to change from that individual to a Scarlet Witch that may do a no more mutant a mutant no more mutants timeline how is that going to process how is that going to proceed how are we going to get from point a to point b is another version of scarlet witch that maybe has honed their powers a little bit more going to come in and kill our scarlet witch if that's the case what's happening with vision what happened to our vision if scarlet witch is going through this much pain wanda is going through this much pain where is white vision or gray vision that now has all the information of the real vision? I don't know how you call it. When he got, you know, when he got, uh, you know, zapped at the end of WandaVision, is 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 he going to come in somewhere throughout this movie and kind of help her through it? Is it going to be her kids from another universe going to help her through it? Because grief plays a huge part in her doing no more mutants and doing that timeline and doing that 
shot, essentially. So the, uh, that's just one individual. That's just one character, right? That doesn't even include Doctor Strange being Doctor Strange, playing with the timelines. What's going on with American Chavez, you know, going between universes and, and worlds? What is the, uh, I hate to use it, what is the end game to this all? So many questions, not a lot of answers. You got Sam Raimi at the helm, which is exciting. You could definitely see from the trailers, obviously, that uh, uh, Sam Raimi is is doing it with the eye close-ups and everything. But I know Frank is going to see it Sunday, the 6th, 7th, 8th. I don't have plans yet to see it, but I assume we're going to start talking about it uh, the following week. So for those of you that want to Talk about the sh talk about multiverse of madness. Hang out, non spoilers probably yet. It's probably going to be our uh, episode on May fourteenth and or the twenty first. Maybe we'll get into a little bit of spoilers because it's been a couple of weeks at that time. But up until now, we got thirteen days. We got multiverse of madness coming out. We're gonna see a whole lot of wildness to to say the least. When it comes to different characters, characters we may have not believed we were going to see on screen, how this is going to start the storyline, the the Infinity Wars plot, the multiverse plot, unless they're completely not going to do that, of Phase 4 and beyond. So we've just talked about two Marvel kind of notes, I would probably say, and we got a couple more in here as well, but... Those are two fun ones because they tie into one another. And I am getting that love and that feeling and those goosebumps and those those 12-year-old hawk coming out in... God, I'm going to be 37. 37-year-old 37 hawk soon. And it's so nice to see because we haven't had that in, in quite a while. You know, I know uh, the world, you know, is still reeling and we're, we're still coming out of the pandemic and we're getting spikes and and lulls here and there, but, you know, it seems like there is a sense of a, of, of a normalcy or a new norm coming back and seeing all these trailers coming out, getting hyped for them. TV convention season is seemingly coming back. Uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't aware, haven't picked up anything yet, we got uh, in, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks Seven weeks, what's seven times seven? Approximately 48, 49 days away, give or take math. We got GCX 2022 uh, returning to uh, Orlando Shingles Creek Resort. So for those of you who haven't picked up tickets yet, go pick them up now at G oh, what is it? GCX.com. Oh, God, Kevin, Paul, don't kill me. Don't kill me, GCX.com. Nope, don't go to GCX.com. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you, we're, we're, we're coming up close to GCXevent.com. Smile. GCXevent.com. You still got tickets available. It's 11th and 12th in Orlando, Florida at Rosen Shingle Creek Resort. I believe there's still a couple of rooms as well. Um, go check them out. It's going to be amazing. Kevin will not be giving out hugs this year, but just tell him... Um, Nighthawk sent you, and then you can give him a hug. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. Um, hey, actually, speaking of which, before we go on to the next topic, which will be briefly talking about DC, the Flash movie, and Ezra Miller, smile, um, I do want to bring up uh, uh, our good friend uh, Kevin and, and Tim, a.k.a. Darkness, uh, do, does an awesome podcast every Wednesday. At GCX, they're going to be having a panel with, oh my God, Apologies if I get it wrong. Star Wars Explained and someone we've, who we've had here on the show, uh, Mark Thompson, a, a voice actor. He does a bajillion voices um, on the the um, the Audible books that come out for Star Wars and 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 a lot of other things in between in the in the realm of nerdum. You know, probably in our world, probably best known for Grand Animal of Thrawn and. And I want to say this to Kevin and Tim. We only poke the bear once with Mark, all right? And don't point fingers at me. I love my boy Frank, but he asked him. And it was very nicely, too. <laughs> so if you're worried about, oh, the rare drop guys, 
that's on you, gentlemen. That's on you. But yeah, uh, Mark Thompson is going to be there. Uh, I believe he's doing a meet and greet with the Star Wars Explained uh, individuals and 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 people there and much, much more. Kevin said that he will be on there as well as Tim. They're going to have a Q&A at the end. So make sure you go check them out uh, if you plan on going there. I believe everything is going to be simulcast as well for those of you who aren't able to, to be there. But yeah. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be a good show. Uh, for those of you popping into chat right now, live on stream, hello. I see you, Monkey. I see you, uh, C. Jones. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mark Hamill will not be there. Kevin will... I'm pretty sure Kevin will... <laughs> Don't hold me to this. But I'm pretty sure Kevin would buy or rent a private jet, fly it out to the front door of Mark Hamill's house, roll out the red carpet for him, Get him out there. Get him out to Florida and fly him back the same exact way with, with full course, anything meals that you want. So, Mark, if you're listening, Kevin borrowed his mom's Kevin card. So, Kev, Kevin borrowed his mom's credit card for this. So, everything will be fine, all right? Uh, but, yeah, GCX, June 11th to 12th. Go check it out at gcxevents.com. It's going to be an awesome experience. Uh, as far as the comic show, we're trying to figure stuff out uh, for it. We don't know if it's going to be in person or or digital. It's been a crazy couple of months for both Frank and I. Uh, so so I don't. Uh, we're trying to figure it out. I want to get there. We want to get be there. But long story short, regardless, our faces will be seen somewhere in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Moving on, as I sip my King's Coast coffee again. Mm. Moving on, DC. Oh, man. DC, Ezra Miller, The Flash Film. It has been twice now in a month's time, I would say, that Ezra Miller in Hawaii. Why am I calling him Miller? Miller. Miller. It's the Italian New Yorker Long Island in me. Uh, has been arrested for assault. It's not even alleged. It's assault. And the most recent one came earlier this week. When the first one happened two-ish weeks ago, three-ish weeks ago, a week ago, something of that nature, WB indefinitely put casting him, essentially, in future films on hold. He is in the Flash movie as of now. He is in the Harry Potter Fantastic Beast films, though who knows if there's going to be another one, because I don't believe this last one did as well as they hoped. So who knows if there's going to be a, a fourth, but I think the Dumbledore one is not moving and, and pushing and going as much as they've wanted to. But yeah, he got arrested again. And uh, it, it's, it sucks to say because, well, okay. I don't like talking about it because I, I wish people weren't like this, but, you know, if we lived in a perfect world, who knows what we would be doing or what we'd be talking about. But in regards to him, it, it's it's to a point where I think WB needs to cut their losses and uh, get rid of this guy. And I believe as I as I as I stand here today and actually want to bring this up, him monkey says he's got to calm down, man. He's got to more than calm down. Uh, what is their new name since now their official merger as of about two weeks ago? It's like what Warner. Brothers Discovery Head wants to redo DC. The new head of Warner Brothers Discovery wants to overhaul DC, period. And this was even before, I believe, the information got out for the first assault uh, that Ezra, Ezra Miller did. And now there's a second one. Variety reported, here we go. So this is a Variety report by Travis Clark on April 14th. Variety reported on Thursday that the comic and entertainment company's new corporate partner, Warner Brothers Discovery, is eyeing an overhaul for it, DC, including finding a Kevin Feige-like figure to oversee DC's creative strategy and revitalize underused characters like Superman. That is big. DC did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Uh, let me see, let me see. So currently, the Discovery CEO is David Zaslav, was eyeing former Paramount Pinterest executive Emma Watts for the row, according to Varali, though she isn't expected to take it. 
Regardless, if this is true, I am 100% down for that, and you let me know if you're down for that. This is something that Frank and I have been talking about for a while. This is something that I believe many comic book fans, whether you're a Marvel fanboy, DC fanboy, or have no uh, skin in the game, we want to see any and all superhero video game you know, entertainment properties succeed because the more they succeed, it's the better for us, the more entertainment we get, right? And DC hasn't been doing that for a while. I was a personal fan of Superman Returns. I'm a big Superman fan, as you can see by some of the stuff up here behind me. For those of you listening on the podcast, I got a bunch of Superman statues, hot toys, uh, collectibles. I, I got to even have the, the Superman animated series and the Batman animated series figures that DC Direct put out a couple of years ago and is still putting out there today. I am a DC fanboy. I also love Marvel. I am a geek. I am a nerd. I will forever be growing up as a whatever old I am now as a 12-year-old, if that made sense. Words are hard. But yeah, the Batman, once again, was, was, was in my opinion, great. Was it perfect? No, by all means. But it was, it was the best DC film that has been put out probably in a decade or at least since The Dark Knight Rises, I would say. Uh, I was a big fan, once again, Step back. I was a big, I was a fan of Superman Returns. I know that was panned. Man of Steel, really, really enjoyed. I enjoyed Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice, but I understand where people weren't a fan of it. Justice League, the first one, hell no. Snyder Cut, enjoyed, but you couldn't put that in theaters, a four hour version. So DC has definitely taken wrong steps, and you got to cut your losses. You got to cut your losses at this point. And I, 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 for one, and I'm sure if you talk to 99.9% of fans, and if you're in chat right now, please comment this. If you're listening to the podcast, go uh, check us out on Twitter if you can and and let us know. Uh, our Twitter is, is obviously um, twitter.com. Uh, we have the at symbol, the comic showed show, excuse me, the comic show, uh, you know, spelled, you know, T-H-E, comics is C-O-M-M-I-X, show, C-O-M-M-I-X, show, add us at the comic show, let us know in there, but I believe that 99.9% of fans of superheroes, of comic books, of movies in general, or even if you probably even go out to my mom and talk to her about it, who's not a fan of any of this stuff, would say, yeah, just fresh start, just, just cut your losses, and start fresh. If you want to keep Gal Gadot, I'm down. I think she's a great Wonder Woman. She's just been held back by, you know, script. Uh, if you want to keep Jason Momoa, I was a fan of of the of, of Aquaman. I think it hit home, even though it wasn't a blonde version of Aquaman. I'm cool how they they did this version of it and how they made it a little bit more tribal, a little bit you know more, for lack of a better word, ethical instead of just a blonde white guy, so I'm 100% down for that, and I liked it. If you want to bring back Henry Cavill as Superman, I'm 100% down for that. As, as far as Superman go on screen, he's my Superman. Well, Christopher Reeves is my Superman and will forever be my Superman, but when you want to see a, a brolically chiseled out dude as Superman, it's Henry Cavill. It's Henry Cavill, all right? So, yeah, let me know. Let us know. Let Frank and I know. At us once again uh, uh, on Twitter at the Comic Show, spelled T H E C O M M I X S H O W. The Comic Show. Man, they just got to redo it. I, they've already postponed the next slate. Give me Black Adam if you want. Let Black Adam be the start of everything. I know it's technically not DC. It's part of. Oh my God, Seven Bucks Production and Universal, Paramount. No, not Paramount. Oh my God. It's the same thing as Shazam. It's actually technically not over at Warner Brothers and Discovery. It's it's a different studio, kind of like how Sony has the rights for Spider-Man. It's the same thing. But yeah, cut your losses. Use that as a branching point and, and move forward with it because it's got to change. It's got to change. I've already stayed too much on this. We've talked about this so many times. I want to move on with, the, with what just happened with Ezra Miller. Cut it. There's so many. I love Michael Keaton hearing him coming back as Batman and Bruce Wayne. If you're going to have him do it, fine. That's awesome. Like, if I'm hearing that, that the if the rumors are true that 
the Flash's big bad is Ezra Miller as Reverse Flash? No. No, we need we need we need we need Ebon Thawne. We need we need we need a real Reverse Flash, and that's not going to cut it for me. I know there's money. I know there's business. I know even if they put it out, they'll probably make money on it. It is what it is. But but at some point, man, you got to realize that you will make more money in the end if you cut your losses now and change the game and don't rush it. Be smart about it. <clears throat> Bring Black Adam out at the end of this year. Start figuring stuff out and planning. Do a round table for God's sakes like they did with... Uh, 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 the, the gentleman that we had on here with with Star Wars and the Harry Republic, right? Do a roundtable with some of the best writers, some of the best minds. Hell, some of the best fans. Grab me. Grab Frank. Grab uh, grab the team over at G42, right? Golden Boy and them. Grab us. Sit down, talk. And I promise you, man, I promise you, boys and girls, cats and dogs, Warner Brothers Discovery, that you will get everything you want and more out of it. That's my two cents. Uh, Monkey says, as long as they allow Matt Reeves to make more Batman, I don't care what they do with the rest, honey. <laughs> honey? I, I agree, honey. I agree. With that, actually, yeah, don't touch Matt Reeves' Batman. <laughs> that, that whole universe that they're making is good because... Specifically, say they said, what did I say in this in this article for Variety? As I take one step back to then move forward, they talk about um, you know underutilized heroes like Superman. I mean, come on, I'm all for what they're doing with Supergirl and how they have her in there. I'm all for um, what they're doing with Batgirl. Yes, Batgirl on the HBO Max movie, movie or series, movie. I'm all for that. I, I, I understand why they're doing it. They're getting younger with it. They're trying to hit another generation. But when I'm hearing that she's taking the mantle of the Superman and there's a line apparently in the film saying, Superman, who's Superman? And sh there is no Superman. That doesn't work for me. Superman is outside of Spider-Man and Batman the most notable superheroes around the globe. How are you just going to put him under the rug and forget he's there? That is the most stupidest shit I've ever heard of. Once again, this goes enough. This does not go against anything else that is happening with casting and the characters that they're trying to bring on screen. Like Supergirl, I forget her name, who's, who's portraying her. I'm all for it. I would love to see Supergirl because she is powerful. She's more powerful than Superman on most occasions. Like, I'm all for that, Karzarel. I'm all for that. But to say there is no Superman, that's a slap in the face. And how you could even get away with, with doing that and signing off on that from someone for DC is just absolute horse poop for me. I am really holding back other words that I want to say right now uh, because it just doesn't make sense. And I'm sure if, if Frank was on here... I believe he would say the same thing because that's like saying there's no Spider-Man. Right? That's like saying there's no Spider-Man. That's like saying there's no Batman. Like, come on, man. Come on. I said, honestly, not honey. Wow. Reading is not my strong suit either today. Smile. <laughs> Actually, what is it ever my strong suit? Let's be real. Let's be real. Oh, my sweet baby Jesus. Mm. Need another sip of my King's Coast Coffee cold brew. Can't wait for that next drop, boys and girls over there. Wayne, if you're listening. <laughs> so that's Marvel movies so far. Uh, that's Marvel. I'm oh, sorry, that's DC movies so far. We really don't have any other information as far as any of the other movies for DC outside of the information that we just got out there as far as Ezra Miller. Though I do want to bring up one other point, which is kind of sad, but honestly, I'm all for it. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Part 1 has gotten delayed. It was originally supposed to come out in October of uh, this year, of October of 2022, but now it is being delayed until 2023. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Part 1 delayed. I forget when it was exactly being delayed to. Okay, middle of 2023, July 2nd, 2023. 
as of right now. You need another six, eight months for development for it. I'm all for it because, you know, outside of what? No Way Home, arguably. And maybe even you say it's better. For Some, some people may say it's better. Spider-Man, Miles Morales was the best Spider-Man film. And if you're going to need some more time to flesh out and figure out how you're doing part one to bring it into part two, what's the ramifications of No Way Home? How is that going to work into these things if you're bringing it all together? What characters you're going to introduce, what you're not going to introduce? You want to just clean everything up and tie everything up and make sure it is up to your standards. I, for one, am all for it. Does it suck to hear? Of course. But I'm in. I'm in. Let me know what you think uh, on Twitter. Let me know what you think here in the comments. Uh, if you're listening at home too, on podcasts, wherever you're listening, wherever the, the comic show is streaming to your earlobes, um, make sure to, you know, make sure to let us know uh, anywhere, anywhere, or even at us, uh, you know, at Nighthawk Plays, I'm, I'm live on Twitch daily, you know, uh, t Technique, T-E-C-H-I-Q, T-E-C-H-N-I-Q. Yeah, look him up, Frank Technique. He's live on Twitch daily, uh, obviously on, on Twitter as well, and, you know, just about anywhere else. So, yeah, does it suck? Yep. But we're moving. We're moving. So excited for all the Spider-Man stuff coming out next year between the game and the movie. It's going to be good. Yeah, you can't forget about the game either. Insomniac is coming out with Spider-Man 2. We already know that it's going to have Miles Morales' Spider-Man that we played in most recently. It's going to have Peter Parker back. Uh, we got the tease of Venom at the end of that trailer. We got some type of Russian or Transylvania voice talking to us. Could be Craven, could be Morbius, could be someone that I'm not necessarily thinking of right now. Uh, so if anyone in chat knows or anyone in general, who else could that potentially be who had that voice in that trailer that's talking about, you know, finding someone up to their potential and and wanting to seek someone out and finding a foe that's up to that, their level, like I said, please let me know. Because those are the only two that, that off the rip come to mind. Uh, but I will say video games are notorious for putting a date out there, even if it's a year and getting delayed. Look at what just recently happened to Suicide Squad killed the Justice League and Gotham Knights. Now, once again, that is DC. <laughs> However, we have a history in video games. So, I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised that it gets delayed. Though Sony's, Sony's actually pretty good with not delaying stuff. And if it is delayed, it's only a couple months, not like a year. So, once again, I have full faith in the team over at Somniac, my glob, their amazing studio. So if they do say it's delayed, I'm all in. Plus, we got the Wolverine. Probably not coming out till 2024, 2025. Same thing. It's going to be exciting to see. But yeah, next year, Spider-Man is going to be fun. Into the Spider-Verse, part one, 2023. You got Spider-Man, the video game, Spider-Man 2. I assume we're going to start getting freshman year stuff with Tom Holland on, on Disney Plus if we don't get it by the end of this year. My God, actually, it's already going into May. We're definitely not getting it this year. I can't believe we're almost halfway through the year. Wait a second. We're almost halfway through 2022. Yeah, there's no shot Gotham Knights is coming out this year, by the way. I'm sorry. When did they say it's coming out? October 25th? Chat, I bet you uh, a bag of King's Coast coffee. <laughs> it's not coming out this year. It's not coming out this year. Or it's not coming out at least October 25th. Yeah. So there's that news. Uh, let's go into one more thing in, re in related to the mouse, the overlord. Switching up from, from Marvel and DC. We got some cool news this week uh, from Star Wars. From Star Wars. Uh, we, are, we are inching our way. Inching our way both to Star Wars Celebration, uh, which starts May 26th, if memory serves me correct, through the 29th. And Obi-Wan premiere, which is May 25th, the 40th anniversary of A New Hope, if memory serves me correct. We are inching our way there. How many days are in? 30 days in April? Cool, cool. I know my days of the, the year and the month. So we are technically, since we're 23, 24, 25, 32 days away, if math suits me and serves me correct. 
Uh, yeah, we're 32 days away from the Obi-Wan premiere as well. So it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time. But yeah, Star Wars, we got some cool information coming out the other day that there is two additional pieces of casting for the Acolyte series. The Acolyte series is, I think, the most anticipated Star Wars show that I am personally excited for. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm excited for Obi-Wan. I'm excited for seeing what and how they're going to push through uh, into season three and beyond of The Mandalorian. Andor looks kind of cool, but we kind of know the end game of that. Kind of the uh, same thing with, with Obi-Wan as well. But the Acolyte, for me, since they've been talking about it as one of the darker stories they're going to tell, a little bit of a horror in there. We're also, obviously, because it's Acolytes, we're dealing with uh, the Sith, the dark side of the Force now, instead of you know dealing with the light side, finally. Oh, and Ahsoka, I'm excited for you well, too. I just, you know, some of these names are, are um, you know, slipping my mind here. We got some news. We got some news from it. Uh, if this ever wants to load. <laughs> it's fine. You don't have to work for me. It's cool. I get it. So yeah, uh, prior to Acolyte though, Obi-Wan, we got a new look at Ewan McGregor's uh, Jedi Master on the cover of Total Film Mag Magazine uh, the other day, actually yesterday, which is uh, which is really cool to see. You get a close-up of his lightsaber. You get a cool photo of him in Total Film with the head down. Um, why does this say start streaming on the 20th? Oh, it got pushed back two days. Yeah, that's right, on the 27th, and they're giving us two episodes. We talked about this. It's not the 25th anymore. Excuse me. The 27th, Friday the 27th, it's coming out uh, with two two episodes. I know you were probably yelling at me, yelling at me as I was saying that. So we got a new look at him. You can go check him out, uh, cbr.com, uh, you know, uh, comicbookmovie.com. You could check out those as well. But uh, the Acolyte, A-C-O-L-Y-T-E, casting. There we go. Just typing things in. Uh, casting for two new characters. There we go. I truly hope it's Craven. Haven't seen much of him. I mean, it could be Craven. Uh, stay, taking a step back too, it could be Craven. I mean, we've seen now a movie of him. He's being in comic book more. As Franco said, there's something around comics and and movies and TV. Once you start seeing those things happen, you know they're going to be a big push. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was Craven. I mean, but it also could be Morbius since we just had a Morbius film. So who knows? Uh, but back to the Acolyte and Star Wars. This is, uh, as of two days ago, this is from StarWarsNewsNet.com. Uh, this is from Grant Davis. The Acolyte rumored casting describes two characters. Series reportedly starts filming in October. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of uh, pieces from this. Another rumored set of casting for the Acolyte service, hinting at details of two major characters from the upcoming Divinity Plus series set towards the end of the High Republic era. The show reportedly set to start filming in October of this year, which is essentially right around the corner. The Illuminati, Illuminati, who broke the scoop that Amanda Stenberg was cast as the lead character of the series, codename Aura, has now returned with details of two characters that will form the ensemble, words are difficult, for the Acolyte series. Uh, here's what we know. Paul! Male, white, 50 years old. The role is described as a series regular, but only needed for one season. Mary, female, black, 8 to 10 years old. Ooh, a kid. The role is described as a lead guest star with Lucasfilm possibly looking for identical twins to portray the character. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds cool. I'm sure if uh, if Kevin or Tim were, were or even Paul, any com any Star Wars nerds out there, who could that potentially be? I am not fully versed in the world of of the High Republic specifically. So if I'm missing something that they could probably hint to, if I just absolutely spoiled something, I apologize. You know, let me know. But they go on to say that the series is set to film October of 2022 through May 2023. It's possible that uh, High Republic era casting production character tied to a movie like Darth Plagueis. What did I just read? Uh 50-year-old between the events of the Phantom Menace is though the series will have a 
Force, focused on female characters, martial arts, and it's heavily speculated to involve the Night Sisters, uh, a group of female followers of the Dark Side and Dark Force, or perhaps the Sith, who have been hiding during the times it took place. It's remaining to be seen if a character tied to the movie, like Darth Plagueis, uh, the Sith Lord, who would one day teach the man who would become Emperor Rashid Palpatine, could appear. All right, so I mean, if they're filming now, I mean, assuming this is going to be a late 2023 release, I would assume, or if I didn't read that right, essentially May of 2023, but we finally got some casting information. So leading up and into Star Wars Celebration next month, you know, they've got some panels announced. They're probably going to have some video game stuff uh, and information out there, which actually I completely forgot about. We're going to talk about that for a second. But uh, as far as what you're going to see probably out of the Acolyte is maybe you'll just have a cast there talking about what's happening. You know, we're going to start filming in a couple of months, but but here's kind of like what you're what you're in for. Maybe they'll have a, a concept art kind of like show or reel for us, but I don't think we're going to get anything major per se. But you know you're going to see Obi-Wan stuff. You know you're going to see Andor stuff. At least I believe Andor stuff. Probably going to get some... I don't think they started filming The Mandalorian yet, if memory serves me correct from what I've seen. They don't start filming for a little bit. But yeah, The Mandalorian uh, information out there. The Mandalorian Season 3 filming. It's either filming wrapped or they haven't started filming yet. Uh, the Highlands is a business season started filming in September 2021 after getting delayed from April start filming wrapped. Okay. It has been wrapped. It has been wrapped. I thought I read something that it did it, but yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I got it mixed up there probably with a couple other things. So, so yeah, since that's wrapped and it wrapped in the end of March, that means they probably have like two months of post-production and VFX work that they could probably put into it. You're going to get a trailer. Because I believe it's supposed to come out at the end of October, uh, November or the end of December based on the prior seasons and how they want to put that show out there to the public. So most likely, as I said, you're probably going to see something from them out there too. Probably not though, something from Road Squadron. Uh, Bad Batch Season 2, I wouldn't be surprised. The Bad Batch Season 2. Probably getting some more uh, information from them as well. First season finale was in August of the Bad Batch. Let me see. Just doing a little quick look up here. Ooh, apparently uh, this this shows that I've been uh, Googling and looking up uh, Pokemon cards. Noise. Uh, there is a panel to take place, excuse me, and confirm for Sunday, May 29th, which promises to look back at the first season and give us hints to what to expect in season two okay so we'll probably get an announcement if we haven't got an announcement yet as to when we're gonna get a date for season two of the bad batch hell it may even be over the summer again or it may tie into and be right before um the mandalorian what else am i missing from star wars what else am i missing from star wars? obviously there's a bunch of video games we're probably not going to get anything from eclipse I assume we're going to get something from uh, The Last Jedi, you know, episode two, part two, the second game, whatever it's going to be with Cal uh, in involved and, and in this. There's another one being put out by Respawn. Maybe we'll get some more information on that as far as like a title or era or what's going to be happening. Obviously, the big, 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 big news coming out earlier this week, which, man... She's got a lot on her plate now after not really uh, 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 doing much, I would say, over the past year or two. Uh, Amy Heading from, uh, what is her new company called? Star Wars. Uh, that's definitely not how to spell. That's not how you spell her name either. Spell her name. There we go. Uh, here we go. So, if you if you haven't heard, Amy Hedding, she was part of Naughty Dog for a, a very, very long time. Uh, she helped write out and creative direct a couple of things from Naughty Dog career. Let's just bring this up because I, I, I know 
I know she did a bunch of things. So as far as what she actually worked on at Naughty Dog, let's run through it. She was a director and writer for IDOS Interactive's Soul Reaver 2 and the Legacy of Kane Defiance. She was the game director of Jax 3. Uh, she was creative director and writer at uh, Sony Computer Entertainment for Jax 3 and these following ones. Drake's Fort, Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, Uncharted, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Uh, she was a story consultant on Uncharted Golden Abyss, and she was with EA and helped write Battlefield Hardline, and she worked with Todd Stashwick. Uh, good dude. Actually, I got to ask him to get on the show. He's a, I, I, I have a relationship with him. I got to ask him to get on the show. Uh, he helped write the uh, Forspoken game. She now has announced that she is head of and has joined um, Skydance Media as of November 19th. And she is working on two games. Back in October, they announced, she announced that her and, and even Todd Stadrick said he's going to be invested involved in it, that them and Marvel Entertainment are working together on a new action adventure game that will take place in the Marvel Universe. And as of the other day, earlier this week, uh, Skydance New Media and Lucas Games, they're going to be working on a narrative-driven action-adventure game featuring an original story in the Star Wars galaxy. Now, for those of you who don't know, when EA purchased Visceral, Visceral was best known for their Dead Space series, she was tapped, along with Todd also, tapped to write and join a Project Ragtag for EA and for Visceral to create a, uh, to create a game for them because that's when they had the exclusive license EA for that. And funny story, the company that I used to work for, Project Triforce, even though it actually didn't work out, we pitched concept and I actually talked to Amy and Todd. That's how I actually originally met Todd. Awesome, awesome, awesome dude. He also liked old fashions. Maybe we can use that and bribe him. Buffalo Trace old fashioned. <laughs> I have a great long-term memory. Short-term, not so much. <laughs> but yeah, this is from the wiki, which is true. On April 3rd, 2014, 2020, 2014, uh, Henning joined Visceral Games with Todd Stratcher to work on Project Red Tag, a Star Wars game. It was reported as of October 17, 27, that EA was shutting down Visceral and their Star Wars project was delayed and moved to another studio to allow for significant changes. A representative of EA told Polygon that EA, uh, that EA are in discussion with Amy about her next move. Henning announced that following June that she had left EA uh, in January and started a small studio to explore options involving virtual reality games. Hence... Skydance and Skydance and Skydance uh, New Media. I thought she did some work on, which I was obviously wrong on and I apologize. She, I thought she did some work on The Last of Us. I thought she had her hand in it. And that was kind of her end with her tenure there because of uh, stuff that occurred between her and, and Heads. But I obviously, uh, I obviously wa was wrong on that one. Smile. But any anything canceled Star Wars game. It is being reported that Project Ragtag is now going to be this game. So we have a base for it. Now, I don't know how true that is, to be honest with you. Uh, there was even a trailer out, I think, in 2014, 2015, or 2016. I don't know. I don't know how 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 real or how true or, or if that information is real out there, people are reporting it that are good and in the know. Uh, with licensing, that would make sense because even though EA was developing it and may have co-wrote it, quote unquote, with Lucas and with, probably would have been Lucas at that time, but with, with Star Wars at that time, generally speaking, with licenses, all rights, all intellectual property, all information goes back to said rights holder, which would be Star Wars. So anything that they created during that time 
if that contract is, is is up, should go back to Star Wars. So if that is correct, they can take all that information, all that art, all that story, everything that they already assembled for this journey, transfer it over to Skydance New Media so they don't have to start fresh. Or they have the overlaying basing idea and they can use that story and they can create off of that over when 2017, 2018, 2019, 21, and 20, over the past four years, they may have had some ideas and changes and, and hindsight and everything kind of want to push forward in it. So in all theory, yes. Is that possible? Is it, is it more than likely? I probably would say, say, say yes. Because if I remember correctly, Amy had a Star Wars game, uh, following the upsetting cancellation Star Wars Thursday, many were looking at T.A. for the game of the Void. A non-Jedi game was heavily in demand, and it seemed like Visceral Games was going to be the team for the job. Uncharted, Uncharted creator Any Hamming signed on to help write the game with Todd Stashwick, and more details trickled out during the game's early days. It sounded like a dream come true. Unfortunately, the game was canceled. Now, following these Amy Star Wars games, and the new media reports uh, out there from Bestman Bulletin, this is from uh, comicbook.com. The details, her canceled game from her time at Visceral Games. The lead character was a Nathan Drake-like character named Dodger Boone, played by Nolan North. That just makes all the sense in the world. Who had a weapon with a lightsaber hilt that could contain a grappling hook, whip, and some kind. The story would follow a Dodger in the criminal underworld doing missions for characters like Jabba the Hutt, before eventually getting asked to take part in rebel operations. So a spy. Heckin' A. Uh, rebels have partially responsible for the destruction of his home pad at Alderaan. But after seeing the Empire unleash weapons of mass discussion on civil civilians, once more he joins the army. Dodger and his bandits of misfits would have explored the galaxy in an, e galaxy? Galaxy in an effort to stop the Empire and utilize its newfound weaponry. Uh, you could read more in depth about the plot and spend investment article, but be warned, it could spoil pieces of Amy Hedding's Star Wars game. I think there was even a a trailer for it. Amy Hedding's canceled Star Wars game trailer. I think it was like an eight to ten second trailer. Uh, new details, new details. Blah, 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 blah. I don't see no trailer. Yeah, there was so much concept art out for this game. But if that's the case, I'm all for it. We got Cal Keston, Jedi. We're in that world with the Sith where we're in between. We got Darth Vader. We, we got a lot of information that's out there. So, like, I'm all for a... A game that is not Jedi related. How about you, Chad? Do you want more of a Nathan Drake, as this was described, esque type narrative action adventure that's more, I hate to say it, grounded per se? Right? I'm I'm actually really cool and really excited for that. I, I am, I am, I am definitely all uh, for it. I'm actually just kind of like scrubbing right now through this because that's Star Wars 13, creative director, Visceral Games, Amy Hennig, Doug Chiang, Lucas, creative, Star Wars, Star Wars, described, and we don't have anything. Dope. Okay, I'll, I'll probably find it. Uh, I'll probably find it after the fact, most likely. But yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm excited nonetheless. We'll probably hear some more information. I wouldn't be surprised that Amy is over there saying how excited she is uh, for this opportunity to be able to be on this or some type of video around it. I mean, it's, it's kind of like silly to think it's not there. Firaxis obviously has a game coming out as well. But what are your thoughts? How excited are you? How excited are you for this? I, I don't know about all of you, but I'm excited. This is a great time to be a Star Wars fan. It's a great time to be a Marvel fan. It's a great time to be a nerd in general, um, especially when it's beautiful outside as I look up through my skylights. 
Um, man, it's beautiful outside. So, with that being said, we have hit Star Wars. We have hit Marvel Film. We have hit DC Film. Let's go uh, into Disney Plus a little bit and talk about Moon Knight. Episode 3 and Episode 4. Episode 4 was released this past Wednesday. We have two more episodes left. This was an episode that um, I believe, if memory serves me correct, influencers, reviewers, critics, and anyone and everyone in between uh, prior to the release of the show was a were able, was able to see the first four episodes, and everyone said episode four was was maddening and insane. But I believe the the director said episode five, outside of the finale, episode six, was where it's at. So to remind you, we are we just had episode four this past week. There are two more episodes left. Episode five will be the twenty seventh. I assume they're not delaying episode six because there's no other holidays in between. So episode six, the finality of finale. Finale of Moon Knight will come out on the 4th, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. That's actually kind of hilarious. So, a lot of hype there for that one, as I'm sure we'll probably get some Star Wars news as well. So yeah, May the 4th will be the finale. I'm sure they did that for some reason, especially since Moon... Um, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Nasness will start coming out on the 4th around 7 Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what's going on with the UK and overseas, but I know in the States, I believe, the first showing, at least where I am, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness tickets, I believe is at like 7 p.m. on Wednesday the 4th. Gotta go do adult stuff, but hey, have a great weekend, Monkey, and I know we're not leaving quite yet, but for those of you that are out there, um, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you have a fantastic weekend as well. Fantastic week. Uh, it's supposed to be beautiful outside. Okay, so it actually looks like, at least in my area, it's May the 5th, Thursday it starts, uh, at 3-ish p.m. So there looks like there could be about a 24-hour window of when this comes out. So it may not be coming out on uh, May the 4th. Cool. So yeah, there doesn't look like to be midnight releases. That So it looks like it's coming out on Thursday, May the 5th. So whatever happens in Moon Knight at the end either may directly correlate into what will happen in Multiverse of Madness or there's not going to be anything in general. Probably the latter, but at least you have a little bit of breathing room leading up and into Multiverse of Madness. I'm actually interested to see if there's going to be like other shows a uh, mid or end credit scene leading up into whatever's happening next in either Disney Plus, Moon Knight's Adventures, or Multiverse of Madness. But where was I? Where was I? Moon Knight, episode three, episode four. What the hell is happening, man? <laughs> what the hell is absolutely happening and going on. I this show. I had no idea. I know Moon Knight had a cult following. You know, he doesn't uh hold his punches both literally and figuratively. He's a little bit of a darker character. He's uh out there mentally because he has uh, upwards, depending on how you do the math, two, three, or four personas, personas, characters. Or identities going on within himself and in his brain. We've been hinted at a couple of them, or at least one other, excuse me, in episode four. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And I, I, I am all for, all for what they're doing in here. Moon Knight may not be Loki for me, but I think it's, it's like a 1A, 1B situation or very close to, as far as the series thus far goes. Uh, it, it leaves you asking questions, even though you may know what's going to happen because you may know the character or foreshadowing 
or just pretty much anything in general. I, I am a huge fan of the show. It is also very much a mind of a show, and I'm down for that. It's it's not PG Christian Minecraft server, right? It's a little bit uh, more PG-13 and R in some instances. I mean, you actually see blood. And in episode three specifically, that scene where they're in front of, I forget the guys, the person, the, the, that, the tomb, and he has to piece together that puzzle of, uh, of scraps of paper of cloth. That fight scene of him going ham, but also getting the poop beep, uh, beat out of him. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome because you really got to see his power and we still haven't seen a full moon yet. I think that was like a uh, three fourths of a moon or a, or a half moon. I would say it's I, I, actually, sorry. It was either a crescent, a quarter or a half moon on episode three. It's leading up to, I believe, phases of the moon. So that was actually a quarter, half, three-fourths would be episode five, and I think a full moon would be episode six. That's going to be the height of his power, right? If episode three was a quarter, episode four was half, episode five will be three-fourths, if it, they do go around, and episode six will be full. If they're going that route, or if it'll be crescent and then full, episode six is gonna be a full moon. I presume that's what they're uh I presume that's what they're doing next. Next full moon. I wonder if it's actually all the calendar wise, the next full moon. Uh no, it'd be May 16th. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. That's awesome. It's it's so much fun. Episode three showed you and uh, teased you a little bit of his power how now you're starting to see Mark and Steven work together. What's going on, on with, uh, not Lala, Layla. Layla and, and, and her story, what's going on with her dad? Is she getting all the information? Is she not going all the information? Um, obviously, Hargrove, uh, how, how Ethan Hawke is a dope bad guy here. What's going on with his power? How, oh man, how Conchu and how avatars work because he knows what needs to be done, Conchu, at the end of episode three with, with turning back time. Was that episode three? Yeah, turning back time uh, to the night sky, at least. Not, not the world, but turning the night sky backwards to that night to figure out where someone's tomb was, which was insane to see. He gave him his power, but he showed him what he needed to do. So even though they're there, once again, their presence is there. They know what's happening. They can sense what's happening. They can't really interject, but they could show them the full force of their power, and that is changing the, the damn night sky. Excuse me as I take another sip of my King's Coast coffee, cold brew, nitro cold brew, smile. It was, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. He's badass. Oscar Isaac is a national treasure. Episode three was a lot of fun, but episode four was insane. Seeing how these gods, how Hargrove, how Ethan Hawke is playing Mark, is playing the gods, playing Conchu is awesome. Because once again, this is showing how a hero is being, dare I say, outsmarted, smarted, outsmarted, outsmarted by the bad guy. And I thoroughly believe, as many have said before, and I'm sure you've said as well too, your hero, your character, your main protagonist is only as good as the big bad. And I really, really, really like Ethan Hawke's Big bad. I think I'm pronouncing his name wrong here. Ethan Hawk Moon Knight Character Dracula. What? Arthur Harrow, excuse me. Hargrave. Who's Hargrave? Who's Hargrave? Marvel Hargrave. Hargrove? 
Red Hargrove. Hargrove. Who's Hargrove? Is it DC? DC Comics. We're, oh, I'm mixing up names here. Gotham, Ian Hargrove from the comics. Maybe I'm thinking of comic. Anyway. Anyway, Arthur Harrow. Wow, words are hard. This may be one of the best big bands I've seen. Kang, well, not Kang. He Who Remains was really, really cool, but not really there. Actually, Miss Minutes was dope. She was really, really good. Her bad guy was, was, was awesome, actually, now to come to think of it. But man, but man, and because he's been in episode, episode, every episode and the presence there has been absolutely insane, Ethan Hawke's Arthur Harrow may be one of my best new villains because there's this cool... There's this, there's this awesome story going on with him knowing and pushing and seeing both sides, or actually three sides of the spectrum. Human being, Avatar for who he's with Avatar now, and Avatar for Khonshu, because he was Khonshu's Avatar before Mark, or Steven, whoever the hell you want to call it, right? He's playing a huge game on the gods, and he knows by releasing his, his god, from the tomb is going to upset the is going to upset the pendulum the weight of what's happening not only in the world but in the realm of the gods as well so what's happening there was Kanchu the good guy trying to stop that stop this all was he not seeing the big picture but he was the good guy because he knew by releasing Arthur Harrow's, Arthur, a eh, Arthur Harrow's God. I bet, I bet by releasing a mitt, you're going to potentially release all these other gods and the other gods don't want to be there and the world is going to be destroyed. But for some reason, Kanshu wants to be the good guy in this. He doesn't want it, the world to be destroyed because he knows he's going to lose power against the other gods because they're already not fans of him. And this was a way for him to keep power. I don't know. There's this really cool story, subplot, theory that's happening there that we have no idea what's happening. And we got two big teases. Two big teases in episode four. What's going on within the head of Steven and... and uh, 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 Steven... Right now, because we're in a, a in, in in what we believe is an institute. Uh, though, however, I believe there's another story going on here because it's kind of ripped straight from the comic books. I think this is Kanchu trying to getting through to him. What's happening? We got a potentially the other presence shown, maybe. Right. Uh, there was another sarcophagus. Right? Sarcophagus going around in the rooms. And that all could be the, the other well-known entity that they've been hinting at in episode three and episode four, where even Mark was blacking out because it didn't look like he wanted to kill anybody. And he woke up and he was surprised that people were killed. Uh, I mean, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's comic books. You know, this could be uh, uh, Jake Lockley, the... The uh, uh, cab driver kind of persona. The, not Raging Bull. Oh my God, what is that movie? That he was a taxi cab driver. Uh, Robert De Niro that he was insane on. Robert De Niro, cabby, cabby movie. Uh, not Raging Bull. What is it? Taxi, oh my God, it was taxi driver. Yeah, kind of like that taxi driver persona guy. Uh, so what's going on there, right? Th this episode four left you wanting so much more it was a little bit scary too with the mummy which was absolutely awesome i'm trying to hold back a little bit because i don't want to give away too much right but at the end of the episode there was a little bit of hippo 
And it looked like it was from Madagascar, the movie. You know, no, all hell, the New York Giants, right? I, I personally think that this is all going on in his head. This is a way of Conchu kind of pushing things forward, kind of trying to get and put some sense and kind of unify Stephen, Mark, and probably potentially Jake as well. Because even Mark was like, what the hell happened? I blacked out. How is this happening? What is happening here? Rage! So it would be really, really cool to see how that's going to uh, uh, unfold and what's going to happen there. I think obviously all answers are going to be told and said to us. As of right now, there isn't a season two. I hope they do a Loki and say at the end of this uh, season that there is a season two. Uh, coming out because uh, there's so much they could do with this character. Or they may say, hey, you'll see Moon Knight next in Blade, which would be dope because that's one of the next movies that we believe that's coming out. That's the untitled October movie in 2023. But all I'm going to say is, once again, if you haven't seen episode four, go check it out because we have only two more weeks of this show. Conchu... Is he good or bad in this? What's happening with Mark? Is he kind of the middleman, kind of the one that's trying to save both Steven and himself and, and, and maybe this third party that's inside of him? What's going with Hip Hop Anonymous? We have hippos now. Why are we in a mental institution, which we don't think is a mental institution? When are we going to see the full powers of Moon Knight? Is it going to be on the season finale? What they're doing with these characters, especially now, what's going to happen with Layla? Now that we're kind of getting hits of what actually happened between her, her father, and Mark, or what Mark and his father went through, her father went through, excuse me. There's some wild stories to be told here. There's some wild stories to be told here, and, and I hope, like all of you, you're, like me, excuse me, you're excited to run the gambit on this over the next two weeks. Over the next two weeks, oh, let me take another sip here. Let me take another sip here. Mm, mm-hmm. All right. So what is else is on the runner show? Is there anything, chat, who's in here? I know probably a bunch of you are lurking. It's Saturday. You're doing work, spending time with the family or something and everything in between. But if you got any questions, let me know. This has been a wild week. Whew. This has been a wild week. So, uh, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, you know, shoot them my way in chat uh, regarding anything. We also have The Boys Season 3. The Boys Season 3 coming out soon here uh, in June. But let's actually go into a little bit of comic book news. Because there is there's some cool things happening in the world of comics. There are some cool things happening in the world of comics. Oh, that's a lot brighter. Oh, my God. You can actually see my face now. Sorry, I just played around with my exposure. My room stinks as a streamer. I'm sure none of you care. Uh, but my room, it's beautiful. It's awesome. I, you know, I'm happy that I, I have a room and I'm happy that I'm able to do this for a living, for lack of a better term. But I have two skylights above me. So number one, I get to direct light onto my five head and my, and my head starts burning during certain times of the year and certain times of the day. But also, I don't have any good lighting in here. Unless I black it out and and Algato and uh wants to sponsor me, smile. Um, so yeah, there is that. There is that. So uh, there's my uh, there's my personal spiel of the day. So comic books. Uh, we got three hitters here. We got three hitters. We got some DC. We got some Marvel, and we have ourselves some more DC, specifically the Quinn. Harley Quinn. Let me actually just move this over here for the sake of my brain. And yeah, so as far as DC Comics goes, they're actually doing... Man. Man. Uh, DC is actually doing some really fun stuff in the comics right now, especially with the Justice League. Excuse me. DC, as reported by uh, CBR... Comic book resources, comic book movie, comic books in general has reported that, just moving some things around here, apologize. 
that if those of you who are going to read this, let's just pause. This is from, spoiler alert, Ian Ruffs, uh, CBR.com, written by uh, Sean Gribbon, published two days ago as, as the recording or, or publishing of this. DC Comics is killing the Justice League next week. Arriving in time for the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman. Wait, time out. It's going to be 30 years since they killed... I was seven when they killed off Superman? What? No shot. Really? Anyway, in Justice League 75 titled Death of the Justice League, that's kind of cool. We're to buy Joshua Williams and art by Rafa Sandoval. Sandoval. Uh, the issue will not only wrap up the Justice League title that launched back in 2018. Wow. But they will kill off every Justice League member. Wait. But will kill off every Justice League member save for one. Meaning heroes like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are possible casualties. The event will serve as the direct precursor to Dark Crisis, a new DC event that has been brewing in the pages of Williamson's various works ranging from Infinite Frontier and Justice League Incarnate and beyond. There is more for readers to pick up on Tuesday, though. So Tuesday, so Tuesday, April 25th, is Death to the Justice League, or Death of the Justice League. It's 2018, 2019, 2020, 2020. So four years in the making. Four years in the making. And the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman. Man, that's crazy to think it's been 30 years. I was seven running to the comic book store for the event to try to pick this thing up. Damn! That is dope. That is dope. And uh, who are they going to save? Save for one? Batman, Superman, Superman, Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Oh, man. Aquaman. Who are they going to save? But that is actually really, really cool to see. Comic books right now, probably since that time, 30 years ago. So was that early, mid 1990s? This is probably some of the best storybook telling, comic book telling, excuse me, that we've had in quite some time. Probably from like the mid 20 teens onward. We've had some real good comic book runs. We've had some not so good ones. Obviously, the reboots of the reboots of the reboots at DC. You know, Civil War 2 and 3. Civil War 1 was awesome. But in general, this is probably some of the best comic book telling we've had. So whether you have comiXology and want to pick up some of these uh, stories digitally or you want to go to the local comic book store, help out those brick and mortars and get those comic books in your hands. Head out on Tuesday and Wednesday for new comic book releases and free comic book days, you know, once a month, generally most of the time. Go pick these things up. Go get your reading glasses if you're an old man or woman like me. Um, go pick it up and start the reading because there's no time better than now to start picking these stories up. Even if you start at the end and go back, talk to the comic book uh, uh, merchant that's there. In the store, Google the hell out of stuff. Check it out. Go to Comixology. Go through the runs. And you you have them at the, the tip of your hands. The tip of your fingers. Tip of your hands. Tip of your fingers right then and there to go through this whole Justice League series that is out there right now that is going to conclude, excuse me, this Tuesday. Excuse me. Uh, this Tuesday, the 26th. That is cool. That is cool. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. I kind of like when comics do things like that. As much as I love and 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 revere, I don't know if that's the right word or not. You know, the 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 I hate to say it, but the the OG seven, right? In Marvel, I am. Uh, excuse me. In DC, I am all for and all down. For a change. As long as it's a good change. Because there are bad changes. As we've seen. But if you have the right team behind you. The right story. And give faith in the writers and artists. You could have yourself a Miles Morales on your hand. Just do these characters justice. Do these new stories 
justice and you're going to have fans for a lifetime, for a lifetime, DC. Speaking of Miles Morales, awesome segue, Matt, uh, as we're going to be closing up the show here soon. Miles Morales forms a new team with the multiverse others, uh, multiverse's other Miles Morales. Morales's? Morales? Morales's? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, the What If series that's uh, going to be in its fifth and final issue uh, from Marvel's What If, obviously. Miles Morales is bringing together the M- M- My- Mileses, the Moraleses of the multiverse for a... <clears throat> Miles Morales brings together the Mileses of the multiverse for a climactic team-up Earth 616 will be joining in the final episode. Do I have a good uh, narrative voice now? Cool. (laughs) But yeah, but yeah, the What If series of Miles Morales, or at least this version of it, is concluding with this fifth, uh, uh, fifth book that I believe is coming out on Tuesday, entitled What If Miles Morales we'll see the multiverse's version of Miles Morales' Spider-Man, of Miles Morales' Wolverine, oh, Miles Morales' Captain America, Miles Morales' Incredible Hulk, and Miles Morales... Oh, that is dope looking if you look this up. Thor. Five of five. And the synopsis specifically... For this, which is written by Cody Ziegler and uh, Paco Media is uh, uh, the the cartoonist. You got a regular and then you got an action figure variant. Ooh, I want to see what this is. How many miles does it take to save the universe? What if the many miles of the multiverse assembled to overcome a threat against all realities? The Prowler enacts the final phase of his evil plan alongside Loki, Sabretooth, and Classified. Spider-Man's going to need some help on this one. Good thing Captain America, Wolverine, Hulk, and Thor have his back. 32 pages, $4. Go get yours on, I believe, uh, I believe Tuesday, right? I want to see this action figure variant. Hold on. I love action figures, obviously. I'm a uh, collector. Miles Morales, what if cover. But, man, I wish Frank was here today because I'd love to, to, to talk to him about it because I feel like he'd, he'd really have something to say about this because we've actually talked about Miles Morales' What If for a, uh, uh, for a little bit of time now. So, man, where is this cover, dude? Why aren't you showing me the cover? Uh, but, yeah, anyway, it's out there. We're going to see it. That sounds really cool. What are your thoughts on that one? Pretty, th- pretty much mile, a multiversal Miles Morales team up of essentially the Avengers uh, or a version of them or Task Force X. Yeah, teaming up together for a multiversal adventure with against a Prowler, Sabretooth, Classified, and probably others as well. Morales, what if variant cover... Uh, number five action figure. I'm all in for it. I mean, right there, if you're a fan of these these things, you got you got two comic books on Tuesday or Wednesday that you're going to pick up and read, right? I mean, that's two right there that you're going to pick up and read. And uh, at least I think I know what I'm doing on Tuesday, right? I think I know what I'm doing on Tuesday. All right, and the last uh, piece of news for the day is uh, a little Harley Quinn news. A little Harley Quinn news. So back to comic books and back to DC. Harley Quinn is about to help launch a brand new DC team. It is uh, uh, appeared or apparent that Harley Quinn is going to be uh, creating or joining a new DC team that revolves around... Black Manta, Deathstroke, Poising, uh, Poising, Poison Ivy, and Gorilla God. 
uh, in Shadows of War. Uh, Harley Quinn is joining a new team for Lucius Fox's son in DC's upcoming Shadow of War Zone issue number one. Sitting at the table alongside Black Manta, Deathstroke, Poison Ivy, Gorilla God, and a fifth figure whose face is hidden. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Harley Quinn writer Stephanie Phillips and artist Anna Molina team up for ninjas at the arcade. Harley fights a group of ninjas from the League of Assassins in an arcade, completes with highs, completes with lights, noise, and an impressive collection of movie quotes from the Mistress of Mayhem. Meanwhile, Luke Fox, Lucius is Fox's son, and an unlikely ally think Harley Quinn is the perfect addition to their team. But what team and for what purpose? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That is also, I believe, uh, coming out this Tuesday as well. So you got a brand new Harley Quinn comic coming out on Tuesday that's starting off a brand new series with some really cool team-ups of, of heroes and villains, vigilantes and bad guys. Uh, you got DC doing something wild on the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman. Killing off the Justice League, save for one. And you got Miles Morales in what could be probably the series of at least the first half of this year, and maybe even last year as well. The What If Miles Morales series concluding with uh, the Avenger team up of the Miles Morales. However, the hell you pronounce that or figure that out. All coming out this Tuesday, the 26th your local comic shop, and presumably Comicology or wherever else you're going to buy digitally. Man, I can really do some ad reads, can I? That are not ads. Smile. As I sip on my uh, King's Coast coffee. But with that being said, we're going to start wrapping up this episode here uh, as we're coming up on our time of approximately uh, two hours. Uh, I am once again Matt at Nighthawk Plays, aka Nighthawk Plays. Yeah, words. Uh, my co-host, who is uh, absent today, as they are doing their thing with uh, pre-signed up stuff. Frank, aka Technique. Uh, presumably, I believe will be back next week. We got some fun things on the agenda, but today we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about and gave a reaction to Thor: Love and Thunder, the teaser trailer that just came out, and how it's. The shortest time or the longest waited for the initial trailer to come out to release date, where we're talking about, uh, you know, 90 somewhat days in between the release, or actually less than that, I believe, from when this teaser came out to when it's going to be uh, released in theaters. Uh, we had a great talk about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that comes out in 13 days. The unfortunate, but Understandable delay in Spider Man, uh, Spider Verse, uh, Into the Spider Verse, Episode One. Talked a little acolytes and Star Wars and Obi One news, uh, in addition to video games with Amy Hedig and what's going on there and how they announced that she's working on a new narrative action adventure Star Wars game. Is it her old game that she was working on her visceral with EA that got canceled? Is something new? Is it going to be a combination of both because they have hindsight and time to look back on what they were created? We talked about, uh, obviously, the the unfortunate uh, uh, stuff that's going on with Ezra Miller and how DC's new, excuse me, Warner Brothers Discovery's new CEO wanting to completely rework and start essentially from scratch and find that Kevin Feige-esque type figurehead to oversee and run DC to get it back on tracks, which, if that is actually true, which Variety first reported, oh boy, I could give this person a kiss on their five head or forehead. <laughs> we talked about Moon Knight episode three and episode four. We got two more episodes of Moon Knight, episode five and episode six. Uh, with six being the season finale. So we got two more episodes of that coming out on the 27th and May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And of course, some awesome comic news that came out and we just talked about it, which was DC killing off Justice League. Uh, that all started in the 2018 series of this Justice League, which will be the 30th anniversary of the death of Superman here. 
Miles Morales, what if? Forming a team of Miles's Morales's, how the hell do you pronounce that? And of course, Harley Quinn's unlikely team up in Shadows of War. So your homework, boys and girls, cats and dogs and children and coffee drinkers of all ages. Make sure to go out, check out your comic book stores, figure out what comic book you're picking up this week, whether it's uh, something older, something newer, or anything and everything in between. I think I'm going to be picking up a couple of things this week, hopping out there on Tuesday. Finance is permitted. Smile to awesome health bills. We move on. Uh, also, of course, catch up and move forward on with Moon Knight. Go check out the Thor Love and Thunder trailer that just recently released and watch till the end where you see Natalie, Natalie Portman's forearms that could probably break a brick. And uh, what else is there? I think that's it. I think we got some good stuff there, boys and girls, right? This was an awesome episode. Uh, it was fun to helmet. Uh, uh, lonesome here. A little bit weird. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Though I'm kind of used to it uh, with, with myself streaming solo now for quite some time. Uh, once again, my name is Matt, a.k.a. Nighthawk Plays, spelt with a Z at the end. Nighthawk plays spelled with a Z. I'm lucky enough to have that that title across the board on social media. So you find uh, at Nighthawk plays on just about every platform from Facebook to TikTok and anything and everything in between, including YouTube. You'll see this wonderful face or a version of it um, out there, and it's me. It's me. What do I got on tap for this week? I'm going to be playing some Myth Force. Myth Force. Got a sponsored segment coming up on Monday, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have some community viewing of Mew Night on Wednesday. Smile. And much, much more. And much, much more. We're going to pull some Pokemon cards. I'm a big Pokemon fan. So once again, you can add me there or find me on twitch.tv slash NighthawkPlay, spelled with a Z, starting at 8 a.m. to approximately 12 p.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to go to gcxevents.com. Pick up your tickets or ticket to GCX because there is, as I am informed in my ear by absolutely no one, not a lot of tickets left, though it's highly rumored that there's not a lot left, of tickets left for GCX events. You're going to have amazing guests there. You're going to be able to see just about everyone from the Rare Drop family. Obviously, Big Cheese KIT is their MC. Gotta love Big Cheese KIT. Love that man. Nighthawk, please. Nighthawk, please. Please go check him out. He is one of the most humble, realist, coolest streamers there is on the planet. And if you raid him, oh my God, do you get a show? He is dope. He is hype AF. Obviously, Tim, aka Darkness. Kevin, K Magic 101, if he even goes by this. You can give Paul, our producer, a pat on the five head. Um, Professor Broman. And many more. There's going to be special guests from podcasters, actors, actresses, vo voice uh, uh, voice actors and actresses. You got um, Dr. Lupo and many other creators are going to be there, of course, highlighting uh, fundraising for St. Jude, the amazing cause. So make sure to pick up uh, your tickets. Get your lodging over at or pick up your tickets at GCXEvents.com. Get your lodging June 11th through 12th. I think Kevin said he's going to be there June 8th, so make sure to uh, buy, and, buy him and bring him some alcohol. <laughs> Go pick up your Kings Coast Coffee over at kingscoastcoffee.com. Check out myself at Nighthawk Plays. Check out Frank, a.k.a. Technique. Go check us out on Twitter over at The Comics, at The Comics, spelled T-H-E-C-O-M-M-I-X, show. Yeah. I really don't know how to wrap things up. So with that being said, my name is Matt, a.k.a. Nighthawk Plays. This has been the comics. Thank you for all the love and support as always. And we will see you next time, boys and girls. Peace, love, and go catch uh, most of the Pokemon. Bye!